In this video, I will share the most common reasons why UTM parameters might not work in your Google Analytics. Let's take a look. The first issue might be related to server redirects. For example, let's say that I add this URL to the address bar and I just want to go to the home page where UTMs contain these values. Now, if I hit enter, I am redirected to the page which is called slash password and all UTM parameters are now gone. Now, if this is the first page of my session and Google Analytics is loaded on this page, UTMs are no longer here. So Google Analytics will not be able to attribute the session to the correct traffic source. In fact, there is a Chrome extension which is called redirect path. So so if you install it, and by the way, I will post a link to it below the video. So if you click it, you will see that initially I was going to this URL, but then I was redirected to another page and that another page no longer has the UTM parameters. So the only solution here for you would be to contact the developers or the webmaster of the website and tell him or her to not lose the UTM parameters when the redirect happens. This means that the developer will have to do some configurations on the server level. Another reason might be that there is a redirect, but it happens not on the server level, but it is just done by the JavaScript code on a website. For example, here, let's say that I want to go to this page and here are the UTM parameters. Now, if I hit enter, I'm redirected to another page and UTM parameters are gone. Again, we could use the redirect path extension and to check that this time it shows JS, which means that some JavaScript code on a website redirected me to another page. So a solution here would be to tell your developers of the website to either remove that JavaScript redirect or at least update that code so that it persists the UTM parameters. And when the user is redirected, those UTM parameters would still be visible in the URL. The next possible reason is that maybe your URLs contain invalid UTM parameters or maybe they're just simply typos. Here's what the correct UTM parameters should look like. They come after the question mark. Here we have the parameter name, all lowercase. It starts with UTM underscore and then you have medium then UTM source, UTM campaign. There are also more like UTM term, UTM content, UTM ID, and so on. But you cannot come up with your own names, for example, UTM traffic or something like that. And then each UTM parameter is connected with the ampersand between them. So this is a correct example. An incorrect example could be where you are missing ampersand. So here you should have the ampersand, but it's not there. Another example could be that you don't have UTM underscore prefix at the beginning of the parameter. You just have medium source campaign. It will not work. So don't improvise. Follow the exact naming convention of Google Analytics 4. Another example could be that maybe instead of ampersand, you're using question marks or some other symbol. Again, this is invalid. Another potential reason is that maybe you intentionally or accidentally are removing UTM parameters on the tag level or on the tracking code level. Here I am in a demo Google Tag Manager container and here is Google Analytics 4 configuration tag. On this tag, I'm overriding the page location parameter because that's where Google Analytics takes the page URL, but also UTM parameters. And here I have a variable that is supposed to return a cleaner URL without unnecessary URL parameters. But if we go to the variables and then we check the clean URL, you will see that for some reason, maybe by accident, I am deleting UTM medium, UTM source and UTM campaign. By the way, if you want to learn how to clean page URLs in Google Analytics 4, but of course avoid these kind of mistakes, then I will post a link to another tutorial below this video. Anyway, so this is supposed to return a clean page URL without these three parameters. Now let's see how this works in action. I will save this variable and now I will just hit preview. And here, let's say I will enter some fake UTM parameters and then I click connect. So UTM parameters are in the URL, which is fine. However, if I go to the preview mode and then I click, let's say on initialization, that's where my tag is supposed to fire. I click the tag and you will see that I'm sending page location, but it does not contain the UTM parameters. And if I check later, let's say the debug view of Google Analytics 4, I would not see campaign source or medium in the incoming events. That's because I am overriding this on the tag level. A similar thing could be done by developers, again, maybe by accident, if they're using native Google Analytics 4 tracking code, which is called GTAG. Also, if I go back to the website 
open developer tools and network and then enter collect. Here we see the request. And if we check what kind of parameters were sent, we will see the DL, which is document location, and it contains the host name, and then immediately goes to GTM debug, which is the parameter right here. But all UTM parameters are skipped. Therefore, Google Analytics will not be able to attribute this session to this traffic source. Another reason is that maybe the link with UTM parameters was clicked in the middle of Google Analytics session. For example, if the visitor lands on your site from Google Organic, then keeps browsing during the same session, and then maybe in the middle of the session clicks an email link with UTM parameters, the traffic source of this session will still remain Google Organic because Google Analytics cares about the traffic source at the beginning beginning of the session. Now, because of how attribution works in GA4, if the visitor comes back the next day directly, then that session might be attributed to this email link click, but this session will not. So if you're running some tests where you're checking your links that contain UTMs and you're doing that in the middle of active session, then these kind of tests will fail. Then another tip might sound silly, but it's still worth checking. So maybe when the visitor lands on your landing page, Maybe that landing page does not have Google Tag Manager installed, or maybe it does not have Google Analytics installed. So if a visitor lands on a site and the URL contains UTMs, but for some technical reason, G for tracking code is not activated then, and when the visitor goes to the next page where for another reason G for is activated, UTMs are already gone. So Google Analytics will not be able to attribute this session to the original UTMs. There are many reasons why this may have gone wrong. For example, maybe there is some technical issue and developers did not add the tracking code to that landing page. Or maybe there are some triggering conditions in Google Tag Manager that prevented the tag from firing. So I will not be showing the exact steps what to do here because steps will differ in every situation. But just keep in mind that you should check if Google Analytics actually loads on the landing page. And then the final tip of this video is about consent related issues. If a visitor lands on your website for the first time and the URL contains UTM parameters, but consent is not given. And if in this situation, you completely block your tracking codes, for example, maybe you have implemented basic consent mode, or maybe you are blocking your tracking codes even without the consent mode. And then if the visitor goes to the next page and then gives consent, on the second page, UTMs will be gone. And if Google Analytics is activated, it will not know the UTMs that were on the previous page. In this situation, UTM parameters will basically not work. Technically, you could try to implement some solution where you try to persist UTM parameters from one page to another. But of course, I think you should consult this with your legal department. Another option could be that maybe you can reduce the number of sessions where people manage to go to the next page and only there give consent. For example, maybe you could make your cookie consent pop up larger and block the content of the website. In that case, the user is forced to either give consent or deny, but the user is forced to interact with the cookie consent pop up. If the user clicks deny all, then of course the visitor will not be tracked unless you're using advanced consent mode. But if the user is willing to allow cookies, that will most likely happen on the first page view of the session, meaning that UTM parameters will probably still remain in the URL. And these were the reasons why UTM parameters might not work in your GA4 property. Of course, there might be more reasons, but these ones are the most common. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tech Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.